Hello everyone. I just spent the last 30 days of my life painting outside every single day and making daily videos. Today I want to share all of the art I created as well as lots of lessons learned <laughs> and tips for anybody who wants to make painting outside a daily habit. I know lots of you are just here for the art, so let's get started with a quick sketchbook flip through. painted in a lot of amazing places in Scotland over the years, but there was something absolutely magical about painting these old castle ruins on this very misty day. And to be honest, it was so overwhelmingly beautiful that I almost didn't want to paint, but because of this daily painting challenge, it really forced me to get out my supplies. And now this memory is burned even deeper into my core, and I will never forget it. As much as I love the drama of the coast, I felt it was important to seek out the tranquility and peace I feel in the forest. 
Forest therapy is a hugely important part of my life. And one of the best feelings is combining it with something I love like painting. And regardless of weather, I always find something of interest among the trees. When doing a big challenge like this, painting outside every day for 30 days in a row, things can easily overwhelm you. And I think it's important to have a certain subject or a place that you can always go back to that brings you back down to earth and just lets you enjoy the experience and the process of learning. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> oh, she's doing it. She's doing it. Oh my God. She made it. Top of the stairs. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to share some of my top tips for making this process easier and incorporating painting outside into your daily habits because it doesn't always come easy. For me, it definitely took a while to build this habit, so don't worry if it takes you some time to get used to it, but I can promise you that the more you do it, the easier it gets and the more natural it feels, and you learn so much every time you paint outside. One thing I will mention later in the video is that I do struggle a lot when I paint outside. Painting in the studio is one thing, copying a reference photo or painting from imagination, but painting from life is a whole other story. It's an incredible challenge and it will push you to your limits. I'm at the point in my artistic practice where I have a very specific vision and expectation of my skills. And so often when I'm painting outside, I don't reach that. But I have to remind myself that it's baby steps. I have to go out and do it a lot and get that repetition, get that studying in, otherwise it'll never happen. And I do have little successes here and there and those propel me forward. But it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Which leads me to my first tip. Don't rely on the weather to encourage you to paint outside because even though I love painting outside in the sunshine, some of my best days are overcast, rainy days. And the reason for that is that the light doesn't change as much. One of the biggest struggles with painting outside is that your light can change in a split second. In the sunshine, all the colors look one way, and in the shade or the overcast weather, they look a totally different way. So you do have to kind of work against the clock in that sense. But on an overcast day or even rainy day, things stay pretty much the same for the entire session. The only thing you have to do is protect yourself and your artwork from the elements. And, you know, umbrellas or sitting in your car even or finding a big tree and getting some protection there. It's always possible to find somewhere to sit. In Scotland, especially on the coast in the spring, we deal with a lot of windstorms. And that is probably the hardest part for me to handle. So oftentimes if I'm outside and we get some big winds coming in, I'm holding onto my sketchbook with a vice grip. So I do recommend having clips or rubber bands or something to keep your pages from flying. And speaking of supplies, I will dive into that very soon. But one thing I can say for sure is that you should always have your supplies ready to go at the door. That's really going to encourage you to go out and paint as often as you can. And I guess lastly, my final tip is just don't overthink things. I am a major overthinker and I can easily talk myself out of doing something because I'm just thinking about it too much. Just get out and start painting. Just starting with the supplies you own is enough. Even just a pencil and paper, going out and practicing drawing from life is incredibly valuable. You don't need to have the fanciest kit or this or that. Like, don't look at what other people use. Just try it first. And along the way, you will find supplies that you absolutely love that make your life much easier. But just start with what you have, pick a spot, and start painting. You will thank yourself so much for just getting started.
Now, I know I've talked about this a lot in the past. I have other videos showing all of my different plein air painting kits. I have a lot of them. <laughs> I have two main setups that I use for the majority of my time painting outside. This is kind of more portable, but it also easily transforms into sort of an easel. This is just a regular backpack, which carries a lot more stuff. So we'll pr we usually use this kind of thing when we're hiking or riding our bike somewhere. However, if I have Wolfie's help, I can get him to wear this and I can wear this and I have the best of both worlds. So in this bag, I will show you some of the typical things I carry. First of all, you definitely want to have something to sit on. This is a thermal seat as well as waterproof, just really lightweight foam. And I usually keep my drawing supplies in a little bag and I have so many different ones, but it's just the typical things like pens, markers, sometimes little brush, water brushes, uh, lots of pencils and whatever I need. I always, always, always carry a little spray bottle because I use this for both watercolor and gouache throughout the painting process. Lots of paper towels. And of course the sketchbook, which kind of changes day to day, just depending on my mood. And I'll throw whichever one I'm feeling in here, sometimes two. I need to have a, a bottle full of water that I can use to paint with, as well as pour the dirty water back into this and take it home. In the bottom compartment, I usually carry another camera or a big lens, depending on where we're going, because I am also a photographer and videographer. <laughs> so it's good to have lens options. This is the Etcher Slate Mini with my own added backpack straps. Uh, but the cool thing about this is that you attach it to a tripod and it becomes a little table or like an easel. So you can set your supplies on it and paint, which you've seen in my videos. I've shared in the past what my Etcher Slate Mini setup looks like and how I, ha I could use it in a lot of different ways. But for the most part, this is what it looked like during April. We have all of my brushes, and these are my custom brushes that I designed, the ones with the turquoise handle, which I use for gouache. We have lots of different pens and pencils, a spray bottle, of course, and sometimes I'll add things or take things away, but this is kind of the basic setup. And of course we have paint. This is my little watercolor palette, which has all my Daniel Smith colors in it, and I have a whole video about these colors if you're interested. And something new that I've been doing is dried gouache in a portable painter. I've been using this for the entire month of April, and you can see some of the colors are pretty dried out. And the palette itself is a mess pretty much every time I use it. But I have been for years using wet gouache in a little travel palette or straight out of the tube. This is the first time I've really tested dried gouache day after day after day. And I have a lot of thoughts about that. So I'm gonna make an entire video dedicated to using dried gouache like this. I'll share all my lessons learned and tips about how to do this because I think this is a topic of interest and it deserves its own video. But for Plan April, it was really nice to have an, a gouache setup that was super convenient, which the portable painter is one of the best out there and packs away nice and small. And I don't have to worry about this spilling because the gouache is dried. So I can just toss it in my bag. In terms of sketchbooks, I have already showed you the art in these, but when I started the month, I was like, I'm going to use the small sketchbook all the time because it's small and portable. So for really quick stuff, the small one was okay. But I found that if I'm really properly studying my subject, I need a little bit more space to play. And I mean, of course I could use multiple pages, but I like the fact that I can look back at a single page and see the little studies and then a slightly bigger one and all my color notes. So this page becomes very valuable in the future. And by now, a lot of you have seen this sketchbook over and over again. It's the larger eight by 10 inch Nova sketchbook and I absolutely love this size. One of the best things is that it's obviously soft cover so I can fold it over on itself and make it a little bit more compact while I'm sitting there painting so it doesn't take up too much space. But I have so much room to play on the page in this one which I think is pretty ideal when you're doing like in-depth studies. I very rarely fill an entire page with one painting. Um, it does take a lot longer to fill a page with a lot of detail. So typically I'll do like half a page or a couple little studies and then a bigger one. Wow.
So, let's talk. He, want <laughs> he wants to run away. So I wanted to have Wolfie on camera because, as many of you know, he started as my employee <laughs> this past March. And April, plen April, was the first real test, if you will, where he came out with me every single day, helped me film, helped me carry stuff. Of course, if you're on your own and you're carrying all your own stuff, it can be a lot. And I totally understand that because I did that for many, many years. Uh, so having his help this month, this year, was absolutely incredible. I was so lucky. He also was there to remind me that I'm not terrible because I go through the same thing everyone else does when I'm painting and I'm frustrated. I just want to throw my sketchbook off the cliff. I want to give up forever. <laughs> I have my moments. What was going through your mind? What were you seeing as a non-painter in this situation? <laughs> well, as a non-painter, what I see is the beautiful painting that you're making and you standing there saying that it's shit when it isn't. I mean, honestly, how many do you think out of the whole month, how many paintings did I hate? <laughs> did I have frustrations with? More and, than you liked. Yeah. It's not looking the way I want it to look or something is going wrong and I get so in my head about it. I'm just like, oh, that was awful. I focus on what I learned because ultimately that's the most important thing. And I guess the other important thing is enjoying the experience. Yeah, so I try to compartmentalize it so I don't completely ruin the experience for myself. Like if we're somewhere really beautiful, like a castle, I, I can have my frustrating painting moment and I have to really try to push that out of my head to enjoy the rest of the experience. Is there a spider on me? No, there's a flying spider. <gasps> what? Are you enjoying being my helper? I'm not enjoying <laughs> being called your little helper. <laughs> I did uh, say my little helper. Are you enjoying being my business administration and director? What is it? Business development director. Are you enjoying being my business development director? So yes, I, I am. I'm thoroughly enjoying the job itself. You know, the, the things that we do, we're going out and about into nature all the time, which is fantastic. Mm. Love that. What was your favorite experience for this month being out there with me? I mean... I have my guess. What? The castle. Which one? The Finlauder castle. In the mist. Finlauder was good. Yeah. yeah. It was just a cool experience. I think I preferred uh, Boyne. Yeah, that was also awesome. Castle. The a ruins. Bit, a bit more. Um, not really a coastal lover as much as you are. Yeah. Uh, oh, you like the forests. I, I, I mean, I've, I've basically grown up with coasts my, know. you know, my entire life. So they're, they're just, they're there. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just a thing to me that I'm used to. And um, I'm, I'm obsessed with it because I never had it before moving here. Yeah, because you were, so, you were landlocked. Yeah. Um, but I still love the forest as well. Yeah. And actually, my favorite painting of the month was from our forest. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which one? The one just down the, where we rode our bikes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just beautiful lighting and so relaxing and yeah. Yeah. The painting came out okay. I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I can honestly say that I think your your best painting or, or certainly like, certainly my favorite painting was was the last painting of the month. Oh, the, the waterfall. waterfall. That you hated. <laughs> I hated it. And it was just oh. honestly, like I watched it taking shape, like on the on the page, you know, she's blocking in these bits here and there and, and I'm like, that doesn't look like anything and then just like, a couple <laughs> of brush strokes. It's like do 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 and all of a sudden perfect painting. And and she's sitting there going, Oh god, I can't paint. I'm terrible. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. Well, the problem with that waterfall painting was that I didn't have a clear vision and for, I'm just the kind of painter if I if I I have to have a clear vision of what I want it to look like or at least a good idea otherwise I get I feel so lost during the process and I'm just it's like I couldn't even see what was in front of me and I didn't have a vision so I was just painting completely instinctually which felt very vulnerable and like just wrong <laughs> no. i mean in the, in retrospect i'm like okay the painting wasn't that bad and it was a it was a nice day <laughs> yeah but you know it's just it's interesting to hear his side of it i mean luckily he's very encouraging you, you always encourage me even in the moments where i'm like i'm never painting again <laughs> before when i didn't have anyone with me i would just end my painting session and 
feel like a total failure. Yeah, and it was a very different experience this year, having you with me. I loved it, actually. The fact that you also had me to bounce ideas off for the locations was a bit of a help. Yes. Because... Yes. There was so, a few, few times you just you just didn't know, and I made I a know. few suggestions, and, yeah. and we picked one. Yeah, we, so if it's just me... You know, it's easy to get stuck painting the same spots every day because it's convenient. So having someone else who's like, no, let's take a drive. It's like, oh, okay. Like, I don't know. It was just good to change things up a lot. And we were, of course, doing part of our coastal journey. So I was able to use those days for painting for this challenge. It was so nice to have someone to help me carry things as well. That's honestly just that's, worth its weight in gold. Yeah, that's my main job. <laughs> Pack mule. She just loads me up with all of her kit. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, we're going that way. And, and I, I march. Yeah. But you're so good at it. But last year when I didn't have help, I did a lot more stuff closer to home. I did a lot of car painting. I did like, you know, sitting in the car, looking out the window and shorter hikes. So this time I felt like I could literally go anywhere and do anything. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for your support for for helping me get to the point in my business where I can hire someone to help me with all the things. Thank you for supporting me so much during this past month. It was a big challenge, but I'm so happy I did it. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope the tips were helpful and inspiring and encouraging you to go out and paint outside as much as possible. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for all your support. Uh, it's genuinely meant the world to us it's changed my life mm -hmm. um and consequently yours yes i really look forward to bringing you much more painting videos especially outside because the weather is getting really nice okay good job <laughs> the end <laughs>